good morning from Bucharest, everybody, and happy to see you. Thank you for arranging this. Uh, together with Professor Ion Tunescu, indeed, we have arranged the team What is Success in Prison and Probation, because in the end, this is what it matters. It doesn't matter we are in a pandemic or in a sort of normal reality, let's say. But uh, what is success for you, Ioan? Oh, straight to the point. Yes. Uh, hello, everybody. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's a, that's a very good question, actually, and uh, I quite reflected uh, a lot uh, on on it these days. Uh, as an academic, I think uh, nowadays I think that success is uh, is when something that we discover or something that we design uh, in the academia is reflected actually uh, on the street. Is reflected on the uh, immediate reality. We can see changes in the in the social in the real life. And I think this is a really uh, uh, success for the uh, for for me uh, as an academic. Uh, but of course, there are a lot of other definitions of success, and I'm sure that we will uh, hear about them. Uh, for instance, let's see what the the prison staff in Romania thinks about it. Are you curious about that? Okay, so let's see how it goes. Uh, let me share my screen. We have eight minutes for this, please. Absolutely. We are on time. No problem. There we go. We are today with uh, Cristina Teoroc, the Deputy Director of uh, Gelava Prison, one of the largest prisons in, uh, in Romania. Hello, Cristina. Hello. Thank you for accepting our invitation to, to this interview. Thank you. Christina, the first question, very fast. Uh, what means success to you as a deputy director and as a social worker with a very long experience in prison? After 20 years as a social worker and a deputy director here in the same prison, Bucharest Julava prison, uh, success is a big word for me. And uh, I know that I, I have so well, just a few minutes to, to say you uh, how means uh, for me. And uh, it's in a relation with uh, inmates, uh, colleagues, and uh, this institution, because after so many years, this institution is my second family, my second home. I, I can say this. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and of course, um, it means uh, small achievements, uh, small or big opportunities, and uh, how I managed to, to develop the life here for, uh, for uh, inmates, our, our clients, and uh, for my colleagues in the same time. But uh, let's come back, let's come down to a concrete example. Can you give me uh, one single example of uh, success in the last six months? Yeah, definitely it, it has a, a, a connect a link with uh, this uh, pandemic uh, context mm -hmm. because in the last uh, six months I had the responsibilities. Uh, but as a as a director, governor, and uh, it was very hard for us to to uh, resolve the crisis, the price, mm -hmm. uh, because uh, it's about how to test uh, the inmates, how to convince them to to have a vaccine, and uh, it was about. Um, uh, a lot of um, reduced activities and uh, their uh, their rights, and to convince them that it's okay to stay in the in the room uh, almost all the day, and it's uh, it's healthy for them to stay there and do almost nothing until we resolve uh, uh, the price. Absolutely, I fully understand that. Actually. Uh, Jilava prison and the whole prison system in Romania uh, handled quite uh, quite well the, the pandemic situation with no deaths and uh, 
no uh, no big uh, no no riots and uh, and so on so yeah i can see why you you, you think of this as a success Thank uh, you. Christina, the last question can you uh, tell me what is missing from your professional life to make uh, your life in prison as a success every day uh, i don't know if uh, it's okay to say it's missing but uh, we need more education and uh, culture, mm -hmm. organizational culture especially. Mm -hmm. uh, we need more trust in them, in our uh, force, mm -hmm. in our powers. More confidence. More confidence, yes. And uh, we need, of course, to ha we need uh, have uh, trust in uh, each other. Mm. Yes, I I think uh, education, training, culture, and trust. It's uh, it's uh, it's what yeah you need for this question. Yeah, you need more. I understand. Okay, hello, Andrea. Uh, Andrea. Hello. Andrea is a uh, uh, um, uh, uh, in the community, uh, uh, therapeutical community inside the Geneva prison, and we are very happy to have you. Thank you for accepting uh, our invitation, Andrea. Uh, thanks. I'm working at uh, Geneva prison for 10 years. This is uh, 10 years for me. Wow, uh, quite a long experience. Yes, okay. a so, very uh, and interesting experience. I'm sure. I'm sure it is an interesting one. But after such a long time, uh, uh, Andrea, how do you define success for you in prison as a psychologist? In my point of view, the success is when a prison officer sees, discovers a, a need or a risk for inmate, and after he uh, finds out a way to communicate with him, about the risk, because in my experience, I see a lot of colleagues of prison officers uh, that they see the problem, they see the risk, the need, but they don't uh, find, find out the way to communicate with inmates and uh, resolve the problem, to find the solution with the inmate. Uh, tell me, can you give me an example in the last uh, uh, six months, let's say, when you have reached a uh, great success? Mm. For him, for example, uh, one inmate uh, had uh, his wife and his children ill by COVID-19, and he didn't know very much information about them. And uh, I discussed two weeks every day uh, maybe in weekends, so I so I ask a colleague to discuss with him to give support. And after these two weeks, I arrange a online visit to see the children and discuss with him. And uh, it's, it was a problem solved with uh, many uh, involved of us. And Andrea, uh, going back to the definition of success. Is there something missing in the prison uh, that is um, um, frustrating you in reaching the success that you would like? Uh, I think it needs a more professional, more social workers and psychologists and doctors. I think this is what they are missing because for now we have like a psychologist for 100 inmates for example, approximately, and uh, it's very much because there are many problems to solve. Okay, Daniel. Daniel is a psychologist at the Geneva prison. Hello, Daniel, and thank you for accepting our invitation. Thank you. Daniel, we go straight to the point. Um, tell me what is success in your, uh, in your opinion? How do, you, how do you consider a day a, success, a successful day? Okay. okay. Uh, it's a tough question, I think, uh, but a, a good indi indicator of success, I think it's 
when you go to your family uh, by the end of the, of the day, when, when you're going home to your family and knowing that all your duties have, have been completed uh, with great success. So, in my opinion, that, that's the, the first thing that came in mind for this question. Give me a concrete example of success in the last uh, six months for you. Uh, yes, I can. Uh, related to the current pandemic situation, uh, I have an example. Okay. Because in this period, a lot of things can uh, go wrong in the penitentiary because the inmates can be irritated by the restriction. Uh, so it was a situation uh, when an inmate did not uh, cooperate with my colleagues uh, and he refused to wear a protection mask because he didn't believe in uh, COVID-19. So as a psychologist, I was uh, asked uh, to intervene and to convince him to do the right thing in this uh, current situation. Uh, and it was a success, a success. By, by the end of the intervention, he, he understood the, the risk and he wears a mask now. Okay. Okay. So this, this they, they were the, the prison staff that we interviewed for this uh, 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 for this event, uh, and I have to say that I was really impressed with uh, with the performance of the of the prisons in Romania in particular, because uh, up until November last year they managed not to have any single case of uh, COVID nineteen uh, inmate or staff. Uh, in in the in the prison system, so uh, I think that was really really a high performance. But uh, I'm sure that there are also a, a lot of successes in the in the probation uh, uh, system. And for that, I would like to to pass the floor to Gabriel, who will uh, do the uh, uh, a live interview this time with uh, with Silvia. Gabriel, you have the floor. Hello, your notes. Uh, okay, see. Uh, I a few words about me. I'm Gabriel Wancha. I'm a Bucharest Probation Service Manager. And I will ask my colleague uh, Silvia, uh, what means success uh, in your uh, probation activity? First of all, hi, everybody. Nice to be here. And um, about the definition of success, I find it very hard to get a concrete definition of success in probation because I think that a probation counselor must learn to adapt to the people he works with, so to, to their needs and uh, their abilities. But generally, if I am to, I, I don't know, to get a general definition of success is uh, when you manage to plant the seeds of change for a better life in their minds and afterwards they use it even when they end their probation time. So the, the, the seed of the change, I think this is the success in probation. Uh, give me please a concrete example uh, of success uh, in uh, your activity from the last six months, please. Well, it, it's a recent example because uh, I think last month, uh, one of my clients came to me and he was very proud because he had been able to avoid the conflict in his family after participating in uh, one uh, social reintegration program we held in, in, the, in our service. And he, he was very satisfied and the satisfaction in his eyes made me understand he was successful and I was successful too. So he managed to understand that there are always some other options than getting into a conflict, into a conflict and he applied this into his personal life. So that's a success. Nice. And the last question for you, Silvia. Uh, please uh, let me know what is missing uh, uh, for you to achieve uh, success in your everyday professional life? Uh, I think that we need uh, to strengthen the community resources network in order to be able to offer them more opportunities to reintegrate in society, maybe, I don't know, diversify the, the job opportunities or uh, the qualification, uh, the pro professional qualification, education, 
and even treatment for people who need it. I don't know with psychiatric needs or with drug users. I think this is one important thing to do in order to be more successful in probation. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Silvia. Thank you, too. And uh, thank you now too. I give the floor to Iwan. Iwan. Yeah, thank you, Gabriel. Thank you. Thank you for the for this uh, inspiring uh, dialogue with uh, with Silvia. I can see that you are you are pleased with the answers. So uh, Silvia is safe. Um, all good. Uh, now I would like to to invite Catalin uh, to uh, to answer more or less the same questions uh, around success. Catalin is a is a, um, a probation officer in a, a Bucharest Probation Service with uh, quite a long experience. Um, uh, and not only long, but also uh, diverse. He was a probation service. Uh, he was a probation officer for quite some time, and then he left the service, and then he came back after a few years. So he he has quite a, an interesting inside outside uh, perspective on uh, on the probation work. So, uh, Katalin, what what is what is success for you after so many years and so much adventure in the probation service? You need to unmute, Katalin. Sorry. Hello, Yuan. Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm very glad to be here, and thank you for for the very uh, nice introduction. And uh, um, what is success for me um, in probation? I I would I would say that in general, when when we think about success, we think about you know great awesome achievements that are possible or that we make or other people make but i came to understand that uh, for me at least in probation success is about the little things more than the big achievements of course it's good to have great stories dramatic uh, changes but those happen also but they are not as frequent so i came to see success as the little things that uh, the little changes that i see in people like for example, just when people gain a little bit more awareness, when people get a little bit more self-confident, when people when people feel appreciated as human beings, and uh, that unleashes, I think, the their inner uh, powers, let's say, because uh, which tend to be forgotten. And after you've you've been through through uh, the the process, the panel process, and it can be dehumanizing even. So I think my main superpower as a probation officer is to to re reinforce humanity in the people I deal with. Yes, very interesting. And I can see the the, the connection with uh, Silvia's answer. Uh, she was also talking about change. And I think it's, it's really important to stress that in, in probation work, you, we don't really see every day a spectacular change. We don't see this kind of warm moments all the time. Uh, but on the contrary, we see this kind of small steps, small changes, but when they they got accumulated, they really can really they can trigger uh, big uh, life changes and uh, uh, eventually uh, a life outside the outside crime. But can you can you give an example um, in the last let's say six or one year, uh, six months or one year from your own experience when you saw this type of change? Hmm. Yes, I can. I'm thinking about. Uh... Uh, an individual that is on my caseload uh, right now, he's just getting close to finishing uh, his term. And he he's rather homeless. He's, he's, he's <laughs> not completely homeless, but he's, yeah, homeless, <laughs> 90%. So for him, like his, his, his dream job is to find a car wash that also provides accommodation, a lot, that gives him a place to live and to stay because he doesn't for the most part. So uh, when you live like that, you don't, it's hard, it's hard to, you, you don't have any kind of structure in your life. So it's hard to do anything. So this guy, he had 200 community work hours to, to do, you know, through his sentence. And he needed to do that in order to successfully complete his, his term, right? So it was not easy for him to, to, to finish his 200 hours, given that his life was mostly chaos, right? So uh, uh, he did, he eventually did, and he was so happy when he did finish his hours. And I could see uh, that he had tried really hard and he was really happy and it, 
it was a success for him that he managed to 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 finish the, the hours and as silvia said earlier that success his success was i felt it as my success uh, as well but it wasn't it was his success of course completely <laughs> yes yes i can uh, i can see a lot of uh... Uh, similarities between your answer and Sylvia's answer is like uh, you are colleagues. Uh, yeah, we also wow. have to understand each other pretty well. We work very well together. So <laughs> yes, we can uh, we can see that. Thank you very much, Catalina. I'm sure that we will uh, we would like to to talk to you for uh, for a much longer time, but uh, time is pressing. Mm -hmm. uh, and I would I would suggest we move on to the um, uh, to the prisoners or, or to the probationers to see how they define success. And how can we really interact with their stories on success? And for that, I would like to share my screen again. But for that, I need a little bit of time. Uh, okay, so we start with Marius, right? Um, I think we will start with the, with the prison. Oh, we start with the prison. Even better. Yeah. Because the Inside prisoners are, and outside. Yes, the prisoners you know? are. Uh, yeah. With, we can, uh, yeah. We can do that as well. Doesn't uh, matter where. Yeah, let me share the screen and then we are ready to go. There we go. Hello. Hello. How are you today? All good? Yeah, everything is fine. Everything is fine. Good. Very good. Uh, Adrian, the first question of, uh, of our interview today is what is success for you? What, what do you understand with the uh, success as a prisoner in uh, in Jalama prison? In my opinion, the success here in, here in the jail is when I arrived to, to this community a few days ago. And uh, in, my, in my opinion, it's completely a different, a different thing. Everything is different, the people. The way they they talk to you, what they teach you, and all this program, from what I see now, I'm, I'm pretty new in this, but it feels like a, a different world. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what what is success for you? I mean, how do you know that uh, on a day it was a successful day for you? Today. Yeah. Let's say. Let, let's take this example. I would define, I would define it by. By having a good day, having some good uh, connections with the with the members of the community, and uh, and uh, feeling good, having a good connection, creating new connections, learning the program, rehabilitate. Uh huh. Okay. So making making friends, having good communication with the others, and taking part in uh, in the uh, rehabilitation activity. Yeah. Exactly. Okay, okay. Adrian, what, what is missing in your opinion? What is missing for you to, to, to achieve even a greater success? Where you I, are? I'm too much new in this uh, community right now to tell you what, what, what is missing. I need to experience a bit more, but I think with the time I will, I will know something. Maybe not. I, for now it's perfect. I feel like, yeah, everything is... It's really good for me. Okay, we should uh, let the listener know that uh, you are probably new in the therapeutic community, which is a small community inside the Jilava prison, out, uh, a little bit separated from the other the other inmates. So that's why you are saying that you are new in this community. Hello again. We are this time with uh, Mr. Avramo uh, Stefan uh, Eugen. Hello, Steph, and thank you for your invitation to, for, for this interview. Hello, uh, thank you for having me. How are you today? Uh, I'm quite well. It's a very nice day. It's a sunny, sunny day. So. Excellent. Yeah, it's that's, nice. That's good to know. That's good to know. Steph, the first question of the interview is, what? how do you define success for you inside the prison? Well, that's a good question. I believe Success, I guess, it, it stays in all the activities you have. I mean, it's not so nice being in the room the whole day. I guess you're supposed to have things to do. Uh, school, socializing, and 
Yeah, a good connection with the family then. Yeah, I don't know, it's, it's quite easy. You have to have things to do in prison that prepares you for the future when you're out. Right. This is what I call success. So you don't lose the time you serve in prison for nothing. Yeah. Okay, so success for you is not wasting time. Exactly. exactly. Using your time uh, uh, in a active manner, like taking part in activities. Uh, and at the same time, having a good connection with the family, right? Yes, yes, indeed. indeed. So, a programming yeah. way and a good way to keep in touch with the family. Yes. Absolutely. And you, do you have a family, uh, Steph? Uh, yes, I do. Well, not really, but I have my own family and my old family, in which I grew up. They are a little bit separated. Um, my mom passed away in 2001 when I was 11 years old. Oh, sorry about that. But I have five sisters and two brothers. Wow. And a stepfather as well. Mm -hmm. um, I have three kids, but they are living in Germany. A boy and two girls. Wow, good for you. And uh, yeah, I'm trying to keep in touch with everybody, which is quite hard, but not talking about friends and so others. In prison, it's quite expensive calling, especially in different countries. And I'm trying to just, I don't know, separate friends and family and put my priorities. In. First and foremost, my kids and then my brothers and sisters, which I consider them as my parents. Wow. Yeah. It's quite a large family, I have to say. You are a lucky, a lucky man. Thank you very much. <laughs> I suggest we stop now due to the time pressure. But as you can see, success is a very complex notion uh, uh, in, in the prison uh, context. Um, I would suggest we move on now to, to, the, to the probationers to see how they see uh, success. Is everybody happy with that? Happy yeah. with that. Catalina yeah. arranged some very good uh, uh, interviews with people with live experience in probation. So let's see that. Okay, so we should ask uh, Catalina if we can start with Marius. Is, is it okay to start yeah, with Marius? That's probably better, yes. Excellent. Let me share the screen again. Uh, hello, Marius. Thank you for uh, agreeing to talk to me today. Uh, welcome, Katarin. Nice to meet you today. Yeah, it's good to see you again. Uh, so we will have, we will try to have a little chat about success and probation. But let's start with success. Like, and I would like to ask you, what would you say is success for you? Like, in in, in your in your opinion. Uh, for me, you know, I'm a football player. I have uh, 14 years in football, and for me, success always meant to be a winner, to end a match in a football pitch like a winner. To score uh, as many goals as possible. Yeah, to be a winner, to win something. For me, success is something like this: to win something. Okay. Despite any difficulties, I go fast and I go to them. I like to have something, even when I lose. And when you lose, you need to get your head up and to leave the situation like a winner. You need to achieve something, even when you do mistakes. And in my opinion, to do mistakes is good for everybody. Because doing mistakes, you, you teach yourself and you learn to don't do it them anymore. So mistakes would be like learning opportunities. This is how yeah. and that's why I'm in probation. I was a teenager who did a lot of mistakes, <laughs> and that's why the probation helped me. I I I learned how to deal with them, with my mistakes, and with my my with my mistakes and with my with my past. And now I'm a good man, and the probation helped me to find the way, my way to success. This was actually my next uh, question. You already answered it in a way. Like I was, uh, I was, I was going to ask you exactly like when probation like entered your life. Let's say, uh, would you say that it had an influence on you that helped you towards success, or rather, yes, of course, I, I learned a lot of things from probation from you because you were my officer, my, and I learned a lot of things. And the most important thing I learned is to say no. 
And uh, so I still remember this to say no. My, I'm a, I'm a very good person. I like to help my friends and to help anybody. And for me, it was very hard to say no. I was like this, okay, let's do it. But you see, sometimes this let's do it. If you don't think about it very good, it can be, it can have hard consequences, hard consequences for you. And this I learned the best to say no. And now I'm good, I'm good, and I'm here in front of you, and I learned to say no. Uh, what would you say could be changed in intubation as you experienced it to, to make it more effective, more successful, let's say? To make it more interactive, many people and I, I was talking with people who now they are stuck in the probation. I I, I get in touch with this situation and their imagination is like this. So I just go there and talk to somebody. It's not a big deal. For them, it's not a big deal. But I would say that. Um, the government should try to implement something to make the probation more interactive and to try to get the consolidation of the same people with exactly the same types of the criminal activity, like how it was for me like work. I was in the probation for drugs. Okay, now I'm in the position of a man who have friends and now I in the position, I can help my friends and by telling them to stop doing this shit. Sorry for my language. And now I can advise them to stop doing this because I don't want them to get uh, from to get in what I where I was before. So you're saying that the way to make probation more effective and more successful is to, to get the people like you involved, more involved in working in, in doing activities, maybe for yeah. other people who are in, in probation. Yeah. To help each other. Okay, that, that that sounds really interesting and it'll be something worth uh, pursuing. So this would be my, my so my last question would be now um, if you think about your probation time, like when did you feel most successful? In my probation time? Yeah, was there a moment when you felt uh, like that, like you were achieving something? Yes, uh, the moment when we were in the parliament of, of Romania and I was, and you put me in the situation to talk about my experience in the front of many important people and officers from probation around the Europe. And that moment for me was a, a, a very good moment. Since today, I I tell people, yo, I, I was doing this here, you know. <laughs> Because you were involved, you were involved. In yeah, I was involved, and I was feeling important. You know, I was like, think, okay, this guy Katarina officer, he put some trust in me to send me there. Okay, let's show him. <laughs> I deserve it, and that's um, that's why I'm the type of person. I don't like to to make people to disappoint them. I don't like to disappoint people. And if someone counts on me, I like to go for it. That you, uh, that, and this is great, absolutely. It can also, as we said in the beginning, it, it can also be a problem sometimes, but now you know it, you're aware. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So that was the, that was the first interview with, uh, with the probationer, and uh, I'm very happy that uh, he brought up that uh, story with, uh, uh, with the meeting in the parliament. That was quite a, a big event. Uh, let me share with you the second uh, interview with uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Nietzsche, I guess. Okay. Uh, hello, Bogdan. Thank you for uh, agreeing to talk to me today. I was wondering if maybe if you, we if you can talk about success in probation, like, like, are there any ways in which you can see your experience in probation as success? And if so, what, what were those? Uh, yeah, of course, all the time, because, uh, uh, and I'm telling you why. Uh, 
for me and uh, in my opinion the probation is uh i would say the opportunity that the that the judge yeah because uh you are under probation after uh, a decision made by a judge yeah uh and um i think that uh the probation gives you the opportunity to be as close as possible of your normal life but not the normal before you being convicted but this new normal where you're uh, you're having the possibility to to, to be better and in the same time to uh, have your family and your friends close to you uh, being of course uh, out of prison uh, th this is uh, this is very important for me because i consider that the institution of probation is by itself a success uh, without taking into consideration what uh, it does for you or what do you need to do during the probation period uh, and uh, why is that um, I think that this is because uh, of what I said on the beginning. It gives you the huge opportunity to continue your life as you know it, uh, being, of course, out uh, out of prison. Yeah. I see. So what you're saying is basically that uh, simply the institution of probation, because it, it functions the way it does, it, it offers you this this, yeah. this opportunity. But would you say yeah. are there any more, maybe more concrete ways in which Probation, maybe the staff, your your probation uh, counselor or uh, officer in, in other countries, it's called a probation officer. In our country, country is called a probation counselor. Uh, would you say that there are maybe more uh, uh, concrete ways in which probation, through the people that it, uh, offers its its services, help you maybe achieve yes. success? Yes. Of course. Uh, I can talk of, uh, I can talk of, of course, only uh, by m m myself and uh, only for my case, yeah. And uh, I, I, I'm positive saying that, uh, and I strongly believe that uh, during all my period under probation, uh, I am, uh, let's say so, a positive example because of the person who I am. Uh, uh, I am responsible. Uh, I am persons who uh, who who listens and who uh, implement everything that, um, let's say, my officer said to me that I need to do. Um, and speaking, of course, again, only for uh, for me, I would say that uh, this was enough for for me. But I'm. I'm 100% sure that there are other people there, uh, other people that are under probation that uh, needs more attention and uh, needs that their uh, parole officer, their probation officer or counselor need to be very close to them. Uh, they need to be uh, there for them in order to help to rehabilitate, in order to uh, help not necessarily to be better, but to uh, minimize the risk to do that, uh, uh, to do that, uh, uh, to, the criminal fact again yeah if there was one thing that you would you would you would recommend or you would see as in need of change in probation in how probation work works today in order to make to help people achieve success what would that be and i think i think you already pointed that out you, you, uh, am i right when you said that maybe more attention uh yes uh yes i would say so um Again, I think and I am positive that I have learned from each experience that I have under probation and uh, from each conversation that I, uh, I have had with uh, my probation officer and I have listened every piece of advice that he gave me and so on and so forth. Uh, I cannot say that this is something uh, we need to change. It's how, uh, needs to be changed in the current structure. But yes, I would say that uh, sometimes it uh, needs to, uh, the institution needs to be a bit more uh, uh, focused uh, over the person that really needs that uh, that attention. And I think that uh, one action uh, item that can be put on the list uh, are uh, projects, more projects maybe that uh, involve persons 
projects that are under uh, are under provision. I you was in a similar project. Okay. Uh, I was in a similar project. Yeah, uh, I have um, uh, I have this example. Yeah, my um, uh, my judge give gave me to to pass two correctional programs of social uh, reintegration that I needed to uh, to to do over the uh, over the years in probation. And the first one was a whole new experience, not for me, but for all of us, uh, including my group that I was with, and including my uh, my officer and also the uh, institution of probation, because uh, it was a new program implemented at the national level. And me and my group, as I was saying, was the first one who took advantage of this. Uh, more than that, I had to uh, I had to uh, I had the opportunity to pass on from uh, learnings that I took uh, passing the program and after that delivering it to other people that were under probation at that time. So you were something uh, like a probation, you took you took the role of a probation officer for a little while yourself, you were, you were uh, teaching other people? Maybe so. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say necessarily that I took the role of the probation uh, officer, but uh, yeah, I uh, managed to uh, teach other people. Yes, I'm afraid we have to stop this uh, exciting uh, uh, description of the project. Actually, both uh, probationers were involved in an innovative uh, uh, project called the Peer Pro Social Modeling where probationers with uh, uh, long experience were involved in uh, being mentors and uh, delivering a, a kind of probation program to uh, to the new probationers coming into the service. So it was quite a strong experience, as you can see from their description. They are still talking about it, although I think that pilot stopped uh, about a year ago, right? Yeah, so when everything then... else stopped. Yeah. I mean, yeah. when so many things stopped. Yeah, that, uh, that was uh, amazing to, to see them again. Thank you very much, uh, Katarine, for, uh, for that. Um, what can I say? The, I think we have a question in the, in the chat, or we have more, but I see one from, uh, from Clement. Uh, Mr. Clement Ocek is the Deputy Director of the Kenyan Probation Service. Uh, hello, uh, Clement. Good to see you uh, again. Always a pleasure to, to chat with you. Uh, you have a question about um, if uh, if the release is a sort of uh, a test for the the prison uh, uh, efficacy for the prison success, and I think you are right. I think to a certain extent, what prisoners uh, do inside the prison matters uh, for what when they 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 got released. But not only that, I think the community has also to to play an important role in. Uh, in uh, developing the right infrastructure, the right attitude, the right environment for them to be welcomed back and um, um, supported into the new life. So yes, prison can do uh, a lot in uh, social integration, but it's not enough. The community, the probation service, the, the social inclusion agencies and so on, they should also be uh, mobilized around the sort of, sort of um, uh, a reintegration project. Thank you for, for your questions. I'm afraid we slowly have to move on to the conclusions. Uh, it was quite interesting, and I think I learned a lot from, uh, from the discussions uh, so far. Uh, what, what was really obvious for me is that uh, success is more like a collective uh, project. It's not an individual project all the time. Uh, almost everybody, staff, probationers, prisoners, they all spoke about uh, others involving others, working with others, stimulating each other, supporting each other, having confidence, having trust uh, in each other. So I think I think success is something that we need to, to think of as a kind of collective project, not an individual project. And I think for me, at least, this is my uh, main takeaway from today. But what about you, Julia? What, what is your main takeaway from today? Uh, same here. I, uh, I, I've seen about uh, uh, meaningful activities, about the relationships and the communication. And actually, this is very much connected with the, our event we have organized uh, to get today. And that's why we are grateful to, to, to all the colleagues involved uh, in this project to, to make this uh, event possible. So thank you, colleagues, probation, prison. Thank you, Iwan, for making this partnership possible. Thank you, Rob, and thank you, INCJ, for uh, for today. 
uh, it was a great day and I hope uh, to see you soon. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Okay. okay, we are yeah. here. Jo John's <laughs> going to ask a question. <laughs> okay. We are very uh, careful. Hi everyone, thank you. That was um, that was really insightful and uh, really interesting to uh, to be able to engage with. I mean, you know, as as someone who's an ex offender myself, it was interesting to hear. And I put it in the comment there. Make sure you, hopefully you've seen it. Sylvia and Catalan talking about you know the probation officer's superpower, and you know uh, Sylvia talking about the seed of change. I think it's the fact that you're probably the first person maybe that's given them an option of something different from a life that they're actually on or a path that they're on. And also the role that people play outside as in that's the career path they've chosen because it's like a, a conscious choice, you know, or, or it is the only option, the family are involved in criminal activity, whatever. And I think that's what was really fascinating, listening to those guys, particularly the young man as well, but I missed his name, talking about um, the role of peers um, and obviously that can go both ways, um, you know, helping them to get better skills for when they come out to carry on their criminal activity. But for those that have maybe uh, have gone through the process and are, uh, are quite positive about it, the role that they can play in actually saying to people, it is really interesting. I thought that's what made Clement's comment so interesting as well about the role of prison officers. Um, you know, not just being on the um, the receiving end of uh, the people with the keys and uh, the rules, but actually the ones that can also turn around and say this person's showing different traits to be able to do things. So very positive. Thank you. Great. Excellent, excellent presentation. Thank you for making this possible, both to you. Yeah. Thank you, John. Thank you, Rob. Brilliant. Thank you. OK, okay. we'll move on to the next session now. Uh, so thank you guys very much. And I'm pass on our thanks to the, uh, the the people that you spoke to their experience and the testimony is really important and should always be included in this process so it was great to have that uh, yeah. okay okay Good camp, good legato, right? Good camp. Okay, see you. Bye.